many rockets today utilize a bell-shaped nozzle, and they have peak efficiency at a specific altitude. So there are different bell shapes for different stages of the launch. However, an aerospike is a little bit different, because it can solve these problems with varying back pressure by simply using the local atmospheric pressure to control the flow area. This means that it could be 30% more efficient, but also be usable as a single stage rocket engine. There are two different types of barrel spikes, with one being a toroidal shape around the exterior of the nozzle towards the spike, and the second one being a wedge-shaped linear exhaust profile. This one works by directing inward thrust from a series of ports along each side of the wedge, and it expands to an optimal flow area as local pressure varies. The advantage to this one is that it can have thrust vectoring, so you can have exceptional control for your multi-use space vehicle. But the problem with aerospikes is that they are relatively heavy and they need complex cooling. There's a lot of very extra hot, very dense gas in contact with the narrow spike. So you'll need some sort of special alloy which can handle these extra hot temperatures, but you'd also need a complex cooling system which keeps the overall integrity of the engine together. Ultimately, we need different technologies to solve this problem. For one, we could probably look at a computer modeling system which can design something and inherently learn through computational fluid dynamics. But we'd also need some sort of material science innovation, which can create a lightweight and strong alloy. The recent reveal of a computational software called Neuron was really intriguing because it encodes domain knowledge, logic, and rules about manufacturing into one coherent framework for engineering. The model can infer physical reaction, thermal balances to build a reliable component. It's similar to how a human engineer would take knowledge and experience to build the object which performs the task. There are two ways it can learn and improve the prototype. One is from real-world analytics, but the other one is actually simulation. And what I failed to mention in previous videos is that this could be very similar to how robotics locomotion is advanced through reinforcement learning. Platforms like the Animole have showed us that robots can actually learn some pretty advanced maneuvers through this type of system. So computational fluid dynamics would have to be key to all of this type of simulated learning. In essence, it basically predicts liquid and gas flows on our understanding of physics. But this would help the Neuron software develop the prototype and estimate the reliability of the component inside the simulation. Right now, the accuracy of CFD is rapidly progressing. Before, this was only done on supercomputers, but today, four A100s can simulate a quadcopter at 3 billion cells. This is pretty impressive, but the thing is, is that CFD is a very important tool in rocket propulsion. It can provide information about turbulence, heat transfer, and chemical reactions. But finally, we're starting to see a computer model which may be able to infer this information and then continuously build virtual components without actually building real prototypes. And Leap71 exploited these useful processes to create a multi-material aerospike 3D printed engine. The problem with all this is that it was basically an artistic interpretation of what is really possible with this technology. Even though it's multi-material, there's a slight problem when it comes to aerospikes, which I mentioned before. And that is you have to dissipate the heat. So NASA designed a very interesting computational materials engineering program. And it came up with a very unique aluminum alloy known as RAM2. The result is a groundbreaking one-piece ram-fired nozzle that incorporates small internal cooling channels. But the nice thing is, is that this is a relatively lightweight and very strong material. So naturally this project carried over to Aerospike Designs. And it's going to be very interesting to see what is created in the next couple of years with this new type of alloy. Furthermore, could there even be more advanced alloys created in the future? So maybe one day we can design the XR220 linear aerospike spike engine. There is an ultimate engine out there that can outperform a conventional rocket design. And that is called the rotating detonation engine. This one's a little bit different because it creates a series of detonation waves that go around the circumference of the engine. You can think of it as one continuous exploding tornado that is happening at supersonic speed. Theoretically, it is up to 15% more efficient than deflagration, yet it's almost half the size. And this can be a make or break scenario for a lot of different space vehicle designs. 
It can be used in combination with an aerospace spike, but ironically, it has the same problem with the need for high temperature alloys and reliable prediction through computational fluid dynamics. Today, NASA has built RDEs, which produce shockwaves up to Mach 6. Their variant can run for around 250 seconds at 5,800 pounds of thrust, which is a very big leap up from its predecessors, which only ran for a few seconds. Smaller companies like Venus Aerospace have also come up with their own variant which has run for an extended period of time. They have incorporated this into a 300 pound drone, which obtains a speed of Mach 0.9, and that's intentional by the way. But eventually they want to build a space plane which utilizes conventional jet engines for takeoff, and then RDEs to go up to Mach 9 at 170,000 feet. This means that you'd be able to cross 5,000 miles in one hour. So it's very interesting to see that we have a combination of the aerospike spike and the rotating detonation engine. And this is a very problematic design in the past. But now thanks to computational software engineering and material alloy design, we're starting to see these engines come to life. Does it mean that AI is going to take over and it's going to innovate something completely different? Well, maybe not yet but it definitely is helping with some of these concepts that have been around for decades and now it's finally come to fruition. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this. Is AI really gonna take over? Well, please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe to my channel.